Hello everyone, welcome back. It's been a year since I've last posted an interview. And then uh, this is the first in the last episode of the show. So in, the, in memory of closing the show, I brought somebody very special. He's a very seasoned person in the field of business. Uh, he's a father, a businessman, as well as a barista himself. <laughs> I mean, he may not say it, but he's a barista as well. So today I wanted to just bring him and talk about uh, his journey as a businessman, how uh, D Cafe came to be. So please help me welcome the owner of D Cafe, as I like to call him, Brother Dili. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you so much, Brother Yen. Yeah, I'm um, quite privileged to be a part of your last special episode. Yes, as well. thank you so much for making the time. We actually tried to do this last year, but we couldn't make it. Right, so right. I'm very grateful again for thank you. I mean, like, do you for making the time to make this happen again? It's always a privilege for me. Yes. It's you. been a year. I, I want to ask you, how is your year starting right now? Uh, I think it's good. Business been a little busy. Uh, unlike the other years, it's a little up and down, uh, probably because of the weather. But uh, yeah, it's been busy the last month or so. So it must have yeah. been. You are kind of celebrating the eighth year of your cafe, tea cafe. So I mean, eight years. It's been a long time. True. True. Um, See, always we are into uh, the business of uh, customer relationship and uh, more into here, uh, making coffee and um, creating that relationship. Mm -hmm. But uh, this year, we also plan and commit that we will get further into, uh, which we have been doing for many, many years, but we are not that proactive mm -hmm. for quite some time. So this year, we want to get more into consultancy of uh, setting up a cafe or anything to do with coffee or you know sourcing out the coffee machine or giving training and uh, setting up people at a coffee shop and mm -hmm. things like that so that's our commitment and our plan for this year i feel like yeah. you'll go i mean i feel like the plans that you have will be fruitful this year right I mean, we already had uh, three coffee shops that we have already installed this year mm -hmm. and uh, hopefully many more will come and mm -hmm. uh, quite happy that, you know, people are slowly getting to uh, coffee and um, coming up with their own businesses like that. Can we talk about the three coffees? Where, where have you opened it? Uh, my stalls? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, 2016, so that's the one, uh, that's when we started this. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, so 17th. We were asked to come and to be a part of the Made in Nalan in Secretariat. Mm -hmm. um, I think that was the right, right place, but uh, we were there at the wrong time. Um, so we were briefly there for a year or so, and we mm -hmm. shut down, down there. Mm -hmm. And then uh, 2018, uh, we were also privileged to, to be a part of the PHQ inside the office complex. Mm -hmm. So we were there almost like for five years. So that was quite a long year. Mm -hmm. um, it has helped me so much, especially during the COVID time, mm -hmm. you know, all the other shops are closed yet still mm -hmm. since it's inside a police mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, service center. So we have to be kept open and things mm -hmm. like that. So it has helped me a lot. Mm -hmm. 2022, we opened another one in the main town, mm -hmm. uh, Razor Point. And the same year, uh, the existing this, uh, we extend the whole floor. You know, initially it's just half of this, mm -hmm. uh, but uh, we feel the need of you know extending the space so we open up i mean we took the whole floor and uh, we open up 2022 mm -hmm. yeah uh, i, I w we were just talking about <laughs> but it is expanded right. uh, so well i mean if you guys can see in the background the, the decor is amazing now if you guys have time to come and check it out <laughs> thank you. it's bigger now it's bigger now True. Uh, thank you thank you brother dilo uh dili i always keep forgetting your name. So uh, last year you achieved something really good. You were on the cover page of Get List, this one, 2023 edition. So how does that, I mean, like, how did that unfold? Um, I mean, I'm quite happy that uh, they came and they had an interview with me. We had a couple of people who have wrote our story, uh, but the E, so um, entrepreneurs see it, uh, I think they mostly deal with young people helping out the the struggling entrepreneur you know mm -hmm. uh, in finances or even in guiding with ideas and things like that so uh, particularly this catalyst is uh, a book where they 
show to the people, you know, showing the story of people. So when they came and they interviewed, uh, they said, Dili, you know what, we want you to be our cover mm -hmm. page. So I was quite happy. You know, I was also quite privileged <laughs> yeah. to, to be a part of that. And when they released, it was amazing. Mm -hmm. uh, the kind of stories that they have put up, uh, it was quite good. So. It came out amazing as well. And then you also shared your story on the last page. Right. So on the last page of mm. the magazine, you shared about your uh, your journey of how you came to be the DKFA, your financial struggles at the same time, uh, a promise to your father as well. Uh, but before we get into that, let's go back a little bit further to before you started DKFA. Mm -hmm. You were a teacher before. Right, uh, right. Let's talk about that if you want to share. Uh, so when I was doing my BSc and uh, I mean in particular my studies, mm -hmm. I've also made a commitment and promise to God that, uh, Lord, please show me the way because I don't really want to depend on my parents after I'm done with my studies. Mm -hmm. So lucky enough, uh, the same day that I finished my exam, mm -hmm. uh, my MSc exam, I got a call from my brother saying that there's a vacancy in Baptist High. So, mm -hmm. Um, I, I was not really expecting that I'll get there, mm -hmm. um, being the, because I've completed my mm -hmm. three semester. I still have yet to receive or get my uh, fourth semester result, uh, but quite happy that I was selected. And uh, um, out of nowhere, where I uh, didn't even have a plan of getting into teaching, teaching profession, but I was there for four years, mm -hmm. which also have taught me a lot of mm -hmm. things. So quite happy and privileged to, to be mm -hmm. a part of the school also. Mm -hmm. And then when you were uh, teaching there for a short period, during that time you also started uh, the process of launching TKFA, is that right? Huh, right. So um, 2012 was the year I joined there. Mm -hmm. 13, 14, uh, I was very much part of the school. I didn't do anything. Mm -hmm. 15, uh, when I went down to Pune, that's the time when uh, I was open up, you know, mm. and lucky enough, I, I, I met a very amazing uh, coffee shop owner in mm -hmm. Pune and uh, somehow he encouraged me mm -hmm. and he started to tell me that, you know, Dili, you need to start. So that that's when the, the whole journey that started. Motivated you. Was right. that before you left teaching or after you left teaching? No, when I was teaching. When you were teaching. Right, mm -hmm. right. Mm -hmm. And then you were so, there for how many years? In Pune? So Pune, I was there and then I came back. So he says, Dili, you know what, I'm going to connect you to few coffee shop owner where you can learn mm -hmm. and um, that's when i came back i got a call saying that you know you need to go to board guy because there's some american people who mm -hmm. have started the coffee shop mm -hmm. and they'll be the best person to train you so i was lucky enough again to to be a part of that family with the american families mm -hmm. and i was there almost for six months six months yeah so that period of time i I took a lift. Amazingly, mm -hmm. my okay. my school principal allowed me to, mm -hmm. you know, take a leave for uh, five to six months, and I was there training with them. And I came back mm -hmm. again. I joined the school. Yeah. And then you started the process again. Right, right. So during that six <coughs> months period, what 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 did you learn in terms of coffee? Right. So, um, that friend of mine from Pune he says, Dili, you know, uh, when you start a business as an owner, you need to know what you're doing. Mm -hmm. So, as I landed in the Bodh Gaya, first thing is like the managerial skills. Mm -hmm. um, it, it's good that, you know, there were less people there. So, I could get involved into all the activities that they're doing. Mm -hmm. So, number one is the managerial. Number two is like the barista. Mm -hmm. uh, number three is like inventory. So, I, I was, you know, doing everything that um, a barista need to do. Mm -hmm. So, um, I was happy that you know overall they have taught me so well. Mm -hmm. So you came back after you were there for a period of six months, right? And then you started DKV in the in the year twenty sixteen. True. So how exactly did you find this exact place? Uh, see, I I, I still uh, remember very clearly of how I got this place. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, that was after. We are done with the school. Mm -hmm. A friend of mine and myself, we went to Big Bite. Mm -hmm. Then in 2016, there's nothing much of happening here in mm -hmm. Jail Colony mm -hmm. as well. So we went there, we had sandwiches and the so-called uh, coffee with the instant coffee. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And uh, when we were looking around, this whole shutter has been closed. Okay. So we think that I think, you know, this, this place is still vacant. 
So coming to the point of asking the one who have a mm -hmm. small shop down there, mm -hmm. he says the owner live up there. Mm -hmm. So still. yeah, and they are still even today. Mm -hmm. So that that's when we went up, and um, they were quite happy to give it to me, and I didn't show up for almost a month or so. <laughs> <laughs> what happened? Probably because I don't have money. I really okay. want the, want to get a space, but since I don't have uh, finances with me, you know to get ready and start uh, with my work so i didn't show up mm -hmm. and after a month they called me up this is Dili. um if you need it you can take it if not uh, we're going to rent out to some few private sector and that's when i said no i will have to get this place mm -hmm. and i came forward yes so how did you manage the finances to lock this place down i mean like lock this place huh. in terms of reserving it for you right so what actually happened was uh, the whole of my four years with the school, I don't have much of saving. Mm. So, in fact, I didn't have anything as well. Mm -hmm. uh, so, I talked to a friend of mine and uh, his daddy is retiring. Mm -hmm. When he retired and uh, there's some money that, you know, he has. So, he says, if you want, you can take it for, for six months or a year or so. So, with interest as a long, I... I I took 1.5 mm. to lock this place. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. And then that's how, I mean, that's how everything began. Right, everything right. Everything began the process of launching the, uh, the cafe. Yes. The cafe. Um, but also at the same <coughs> time, after you had reserved the place, I mean, you also had some several financial struggles again true, to, to true. put the place together. Right. So how did you again manage the finances to, to get this process going? I mean, it was such a struggle for me as well. Uh, because I don't have that much of enough money to, to start off this. Um, so after I took a loan of 1.5 just to pay the security, mm -hmm. uh, next I have a friend and also who, whom I also call as an uncle. Mm -hmm. um, he's been quite close to me. We don't have any blood relation as such, uh, but he's uh, God's child uh, whom we were together uh, during my stage long. And when I shared the idea of like starting up a cafe, uh, every time I talk to him, he says, Dilly, don't worry, the Lord will provide. And uh, so after, you know, the training is done, after I book this place, I call him up and I share my burden. And he says, please come to Shlong and we'll talk about it. And he gave me one lakh. And that's when I started to break down the wall of the mm -hmm. kitchen. Mm -hmm. And I uh, booked or I, I ordered for the sofa. Mm -hmm. And uh, after that, you know, because it's, it's just a gradual process, mm -hmm. step after the steps. Mm -hmm. um, I'm quite happy that you know, the Lord slowly opened up uh, uh, people's mind. I talked to a few of my friends. Mm -hmm. Some of them, they gave me the money without any interest. Mm -hmm. um, but some of them, they lent me with interest also. Mm -hmm. um, also, plus, after almost everything is done, um, I'm quite confused because... Uh, I need to get a coffee machine. Mm -hmm. And then the, the coffee machine cost me almost like three lakhs. Mm -hmm. So I talked to my daddy. Daddy says, it's okay, let's talk to the society because back at home in village, uh, there are a number of small societies where they do lending out money and things like that with a very less interest. Okay. I mean, of course, not very less because they charge 3%. Mm -hmm. So from there, I took like three lakhs mm -hmm. and I, I ordered my coffee machine. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So... In total, I spent around like 15, 16 lakhs for me to start this. Mm. Uh, even when I, uh, when I was starting, there are a lot of things that is undone. But I thought, okay, okay, let me start off. And then, you know, over the course of time, I'll keep mm. changing, you know. Mm -hmm. So that's how I begin. Mm -hmm. But uh, looking at those finances where I get it, um, it was never easy. And I didn't get it one time. Mm. So it was like one after the other. Uh, but I'm quite happy and uh, I want to thank to God that, you know, that has happened because uh, I may never comprehend uh, the blessing and God's grace if I have that much of money or mm -hmm. somebody just give me like, you know, 15 or 16 lakhs at one time, then I may not really realize of God's blessing as well. Blessing. So I'm quite thankful to God enough for, for that also, mm -hmm. even though it's, it's a struggle. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You've faced... Uh tremendous challenges i mean like in putting the place together in 2016 and then back again back again so i think that you've come a very long way and now that 
when we look at the whole entire cafe, you have so many things that I think you feel proud about. True, true. You have so many now, not just one, but you have two <laughs> coffee machines or three coffee. I don't know. I cannot see, but right, maybe there's right, more. Right. <laughs> so, yeah. and then, and this place is also just a hot spot. For so many people, not just Gen Zs, but millennials mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. all age people. So I right, think right. Uh, the place itself uh, holds a lot of memories and meanings. True, true. I mean, by God's grace, uh, we, we we have like uh, from infant to small kids to you know like eighties. Mm -hmm. So varieties of people walk into it, mm -hmm. of course. But majority are the college students now. Mm -hmm. uh, but we have a lot of the variety uh, group of people. So. We're quite thankful to all my customers mm -hmm. who have been quite faithful and loyal to, mm -hmm. to the cafe. I'm yeah. sure you are. I want to ask you this. When you were talking about the people who, feast, if, uh, who helped you financially, in case if they were not there to help you in terms of monetary, how do you think you would have taken the process forward? Um, I doubt. Uh, because when the, I have booked this place, mm -hmm. so... Uh, ANC, I mean, when you look into my life, I, I took up everything with a rest. I know what is going to happen next, uh, but I took a rest and we started the journey. So, after I locked this place, paying the security, I went to a few banks. I uh, tried to get a loan or get to avail the loan from the bank, but I can't get it because I didn't have any existing account, number one. And number two, I didn't have any translation <clears throat> and a lot of things. So for me to get from the bank, uh, it's like impossible. Mm -hmm. uh, but I don't know how it will be if there are not people around to, to help me out, yes. Mm -hmm. But Konishina, even to, with the blind uh, thing, uh, we step up with faith. Mm -hmm. And truly because of the faith, uh, we could achieve and success. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. As I always like to say, you were never denied, only redirected. Thank you. Thank <laughs> um, you, you. When you were setting up the place and putting the place together in terms of uh, the constructions, the coffee machines, and so many things, your father also played a very huge role in that. Right. Can we talk about that? Um, so, <clears throat> my dad, uh, since I was doing my studies, he always wants me to, to be into the government sector, mm -hmm. you know, because I think for the longest time, a lot of our parents, they want their kids to, to get into the government sector, mm -hmm. uh, so as my dad was. Mm -hmm. uh, but with that four years of my teaching in the school, uh, he started to see a different side of me where I didn't give much of importance. Mm -hmm. Or, mm -hmm. Of course, it's not that I didn't sit for the exams. Mm -hmm. I sat for a couple of it. Mm -hmm. uh, we cleared the first uh, tire. Mm -hmm. Second tire, I never cleared because mm -hmm. my preparation and with that mm -hmm. level of examination was never matched. So, but deep inside, I was never into the government sector. Mm -hmm. um, so when I came up in 2015 and talked to my daddy, uh, trying to share my ideas of like the starting a coffee shop, um, my dad says, the Lord will be with you. Uh, I have nothing from my side to support you because as you know, we don't have any money. So I'm uh, never there to support you financially. Mm -hmm. But uh, if you think that that's what the Lord has called for, then please go ahead. My prayers are always with you. Mm -hmm. And with that encouragement, and I know for sure that particularly if my dad says no, I would have stopped or I would have come with a different thinking. But uh, my dad was quite positive and I think he believes in me. So he says, okay, you go ahead. I think the Lord will open up ways. Mm -hmm. So... That's how I, I think began. It yeah. did. The Lord did. It did. It did. Um, I'm, I mean, emotionally, I'm sad that my daddy couldn't see after everything is done. Mm -hmm. So my dad passed away in 2016, the uh, same year. When you started? Just before I started. Mm -hmm. um, when I was doing a little bit of my work mm -hmm. of breaking down the kitchen and things like that, he came up and visited once. Mm -hmm. But uh, since everything was done in the month of August or early part of September, so my dad passed away July. Mm -hmm. So he couldn't see, but I'm sure he'll be proud of where we are today and how we I'm, started. I'm sure yes. he is. And then I think that his presence still exists today in this true, true. in the cafe. 
because right. you've done so much expanded it and then it has become such a hub for so many people so True. i think his blessings are still here very much very much <laughs> um you uh, you had hey did you have a tough time naming the cafe um True. Um, I was thinking, okay, how to go about. Um, bluntly, I'll, I'll mm -hmm. name few. Okay. I was also thinking to name a woody cafe because mm -hmm. every time I was thinking, okay, I want my cafe to be a lot of wood inside, mm -hmm. and uh, with the forest and our Naga people, there's a lot of connection and things like that. Uh, the second is I want to name with Keko, you know, because uh, that's my title and uh, the. Name Keko itself carries a lot of weight on it, um, but I think again that no, that's too much because I'm going to carry the whole of the clan mm -hmm. uh, title. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. finally, I said, okay, uh, my name starts with D. Um, what if I come up with D Cafe? Mm -hmm. And uh, when I shared this D Cafe to a friend of mine, come up designing the logo mm -hmm. and things like that, and, and I feel like okay, this is quite simple, and I, I like it. So mm -hmm. okay. yeah. You locked it, right? <laughs> I, I think you were mentioning last time also when you say that inverted D. Inverted D. It meant something. Yeah, right? right, right. So, I mean, I don't know, and even my friend, the one who designed the logo for me, he don't know. Mm -hmm. But a lot of time, I mean, since we have an inverted D, people, some people think that it's an antichrist, okay. or you know, it doesn't mm -hmm. give a good symbol and things like that. So when I was doing my training in Bodhga, I met this journalist, very old lady. And um, so since I was there, I was also sharing that, you know, uh, I am from this part of the world. I'm also planning to start a coffee shop and things like that. And they're quite happy. Mm -hmm. So when the logo is designed, I sent it to her. Mm -hmm. And she was quite happy. Really, I'm really, really impressed mm -hmm. with your logo. And I asked her, why? And she says, the inverted year symbolize a meeting place mm. so i shared that to my friend who designed the logo for me mm -hmm. and we had a good laugh i mean i mean what a coincidence you know mm -hmm. and truly today because of the inverted year not because of the inverted inverted year but i think that whole that symbolism mm -hmm. has been fulfilled you know today. yeah yeah and then i mean like it's it's quite obvious also i think the whole week and the weekend of saturday is right. like everything is backed <laughs> and then from all ages of people come here so it definitely is a meeting place meeting for place. so yes. many people as mm. well um okay so you don't source your own coffee at the moment but do you no, right? um so i, I don't roast uh, oh, okay. my own beans okay okay um and now that you know there are a lot of coffee plantation and a lot of coffee roastery are coming up in and around nagaland people always ask me like why why don't you roast or why don't you use nagaland beans and I have my own story from mm -hmm. the other side, you know. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. when we initially started, uh, there's no roastery or uh, there's not much of coffee available even in Nagaland. And I have very less knowledge that, you know, they are there. Mm -hmm. uh, but to, to source doubt and to reach the demand of the people, I was quite doubtful. Mm -hmm. um, so what happened was since my training, uh, we have been trying a couple of beans from here and there. And those American people who trained me, they said, okay, I think these beans is the best beans that we can get it right now. So ever since we started, we have been to, uh, in connection with the Blue Tukai. Mm. Um, I particularly like uh, a single estate beans, 100% uh, mm. Arabica from Chikma Gluru. And one thing I like about the Chikma Gluru beans is, um, I think even the farmers, uh, they know what they're doing. Being one of the first coffee plantation in India. So they have so much knowledge about coffee, you know, so uh, the end product, they give a very quality, healthy beans. So, and uh, no doubt, uh, until today, the, the Blue Tukai, the company, they never disappoint me with their roasting profile mm -hmm. and their consistency. So mm -hmm. even today, we are still very much mm -hmm. part of the mm -hmm. Blue Tukai. Mm -hmm. So your, your relationship with uh, Blue Tukai? The one who is roasting for you as well as the source, right? Right, right. If you have you have had this relationship for almost eight years, eight years. now. Mm. So how do you want to take that relationship forward again? So um, they need 19, just, you know, the, the lockdown or the whole mess happened. I went up to Delhi because I have been using for almost like uh, four or five years and I really need to get to see them as well and also mm -hmm. see what they do and how they do. So that year, when I visited Delhi, 
the owner took me mm -hmm. to the whole places of the warehouse, the storehouse. I mean, the, the, the working places, the roastery, the cafe. So I was quite impressed of what they do, you know. And then the, there I, I give this idea of telling him that, you know, uh, in Nagaland we have a lot of coffee plantation happening right now. And so in the longer term, the, would you like to, you know, a partner together and then source beans from Nagaland? And he was more than happy to say yes. And so last year, um, before we start sourcing, Mm -hmm. uh, not last year, 2022, mm -hmm. uh, he sent one of his experts mm -hmm. and we visit to a few farms in around Nagaland. Mm -hmm. And uh, 2023, we could manage to get around like 300 plus kilo. That's a lot. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So um, we sent it back, the parchment to, to Bangalore, mm -hmm. they clean it up, mm -hmm. they sent it back to Delhi, mm -hmm. they did roasting from Delhi, they sent me back. Okay, okay. And so last year during the humble, mm -hmm. uh, we used only the Nagaland coffee, mm -hmm. uh, the coffee from Timinu. Uh, and also we did a little bit of hamper gift for governor. So okay. we sent it out like here and there. So all those are like the Nagaland products. So yes. this year we are expecting around like two tons, so 2,000 kilos and things like that. That so is a lot again. <laughs> that's a lot. So hopefully we will get it. Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. once if we start receiving that, um, we'll always have a slot for Nagalan coffee plus mm -hmm. also the beans that we have been using for the Last longest time. Years. Yes, mm -hmm. right. Mm -hmm. yeah. You've tasted the co coffee beans yourself from Temenu. Right, how, right. How, how is that? Um, see, uh, at the end of the day, coffee is also so much to do with your adaptation, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, if you start a journey with this kind of beans, with this kind of this kind of roasting mm -hmm. profile, mm -hmm. I mean you're much into that. Mm -hmm. um, no doubt, uh, the 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 richness is quite strong. I mean the flavor, um, but uh, probably because of the, the the storing or the processing, something is missing. I would say mm -hmm. uh, because it didn't give the full flavor out of it. Um, when I sent that uh, parchment beans to my friend, uh, you know, the moisture content was quite high. So instead of like, you know, uh, keeping two, three days and start roasting, you have to uh, keep it open and dry for another mm -hmm. a couple more days mm -hmm. like that. And we need to reduce the moisture. So, um, but I can't really say, I mean, I can't really be justice. I can't be just, I can't do justice right now because mm -hmm. the parchment is also like, quite less mm -hmm. also the whole uh, shipping and things like it took a lot of time mm -hmm. but uh, the, the 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 flavor that gives it out uh, the the oaky flavor was like quite strong so mm -hmm. uh, i'm kind of like it uh, but let's see this year as we get more beans and hopefully you know uh, the whole process of cleaning and processing would be a little better mm -hmm. yeah i think we are still a growing economy in terms of coffee plantation so maybe it could be the soil texture as well which mm -hmm. has a little bit of mm -hmm. effect on the beans mm -hmm. could be, could be uh, I can't really blame to, to any person uh -huh. right now also because uh, one thing that we need to be very sure is also uh, we're, we're at a very juvenile stage when it comes to coffee yes. mm -hmm. uh, there are people in the south or the other parts of the world where you know like it's been running for hundreds and hundreds of years but we have just started uh, most of the beans that we're getting right now is the the coffee that has been planted in the year 2016 17 and 18 mm. like that you know so it takes time to start. um so four years is oh. a good year okay. uh, we can start harvesting after four years mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, but before that there are a lot of plants where they start to bear fruits but it's not very advisable for people to start harvesting you know because you haven't reached that maturity even if they said producing mm -hmm. the best is like to to mm -hmm damage the pup so that you know they didn't produce the fruit mm. but as they reach the maturity which mm. means like four years mm -hmm. i mean it's good enough that we can allow them to start bearing mm. fruits yeah so maximum is four years yeah maturation yeah we were talking about roasting earlier but many people might not know how to do roasting what roasting is so roasting will take a little more time uh Right now, my friend Lichant and Vivito, they're doing an amazing mm -hmm. job. Mm -hmm. uh, some few other uh, uh, private sectors are coming up, roasting their own beans. Um, and um, see, a anybody cannot do that, you know. Uh, one would be investing on a roasting machine. Mm -hmm. The other part is the skills of how you put into the roasting, right? Mm -hmm. uh, but 
Kwanish na ating my friend Lichan Tumtoy and uh, Vivito is doing very good job I'm sure they supplying are. to all over Nagaland as well. So. <laughs> I'm sure they are. Yeah. I, I think they're also doing wonderful as well. Right, right. <laughs> and you, you're no less as well. So, um, you're no less. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> I'll give you that. Right. Uh, you, you've had, before we go a little bit out of context on your coffee journey, I want to ask you, um, your relationship with uh, Blue Tokai has is is going very strong isn't it so uh in the future again maybe uh if you start sourcing your own beans do you want to end the relationship or do you still just want to you know take the relationship uh, that i can't say right now um because for me to invest on a roasting machine and start my own roasting unit uh, will take a little more time mm -hmm. um but definitely even if that happened or not happened my relation with the blue car will continue. I mean, uh, saying that even if I start my own roasting unit, uh, the only help that I would ask is from the blue team, mm -hmm. and they're more than happy to you know mm -hmm. come and help me out. So uh, I think the relation will continue like that. Mm -hmm. Yes, I think it should because I feel like roasting takes a lot of time. Right, right. So maybe you could also learn mm -hmm. a few. I think. True, true. true. <laughs> um, I wanna ask. Uh, what do you think is the success rate for somebody who wants to, you know, open a business or something like that? Um, you know, I can't be very sure of that because I didn't have any survey. So with my only seeing here and there, I can't say like, okay, mm. this is the success rate. But uh, definitely when it comes to coffee, and uh, since we started 2016, after that, a lot of coffee shops have come out. Mm. So until now, they are just one, two where they shut it down and uh, definitely there are people who have started before me but they couldn't uh, continue and they've shut down mm -hmm. that i know a couple of it mm -hmm. but after we started uh, most of the people um, they're still continuing only i mean it may not be that running that busy uh, but still they are continuing so mm -hmm. i think with particularly with the coffee um people are doing really good Mm -hmm. I think there's a lot of competition around as well. For you personally as well, I, I guess there are a lot of competitions. Um, I can't say competition as well, uh, mm -hmm. because when we started, um, because I'm also another person who always open up for competition mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. But uh, like I said, when we started, our whole idea is to set up a culture to our mm -hmm. society. Mm -hmm. And uh, the reason is, uh, then we don't have any coffee culture, right? We don't have any trend of drink coffee. We're more into tea and things like that. Or not only that, you know, going to a cafe and mm -hmm. spending time, mm -hmm. there was no culture at all. Mm -hmm. uh, so our whole intention was like, you know, to set that culture. And today, not just because of me, but with a lot of people who have started together mm -hmm. or maybe who have started recently, I think we are making that culture more happen. And I could says that you know a lot of people now is their lifestyle mm. of drink coffee you know mm -hmm. so quite happy with with a lot of people who have mm -hmm. started and who have come into the journey of mm -hmm. coffee so you're just glad that I'm, people I'm happy. are into coffee now. right right <laughs> really really happy mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and i would say that you know and i would encourage a lot of young people if you think please mm. start a coffee shop mm -hmm. because uh, there's a lot of lot of money there you yes. need that as well Yes. We need coffee as well, yeah. <laughs> caffeine. Uh, when you started the cafe in 2016, soon after that, the COVID happened in 2019. Yes, right. So, I'm sure it must have affected your business in some way or the other. Uh -huh. um, so, first was the demonetization, mm. and uh, that affected a little bit. Uh, and then we think that, you know, like the business is picking up. So the COVID, uh, the lockdown happened mm -hmm. in the month of March. Mm -hmm. Very clearly remember because mm -hmm. the time I was in um, Nagpur with a friend of mine, mm -hmm. and uh, in few part of the town in Nagpur, they're starting with the lockdown, mm -hmm. and the whole India must uh, lockdown started in uh, March twenty one, I suppose. March, yeah, twenty one or twenty two, like that. So <clears throat> just before that, so from January till that period of time. The business was at the peak, mm. um, and I was quite happy that you know, like, uh, the business was going so so good. And with that, uh, we have also ordered a lot of things. For instance, like 
um, more coffee machine, uh, takeaway cups, carry bag. You know, so we thought that you know we also need to to upgrade our our system. Mm -hmm. um, so when we were doing that, uh, the lockdown started. Mm -hmm. So um, it was kind of like a pain for for us, mm -hmm. not just a pain, but a good a good uh, awakening moment for for me in particular. Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of our young people also. Mm. Uh, have learned so much uh, with the COVID. Mm -hmm. There must have been a lot of losses during those right. few years. Right. How did you come out of that? Um, see, I mean, if you are talking about the perspective of a business, mm. even not opening for an hour is like a huge, huge mm -hmm. loss. Mm -hmm. And not opening for three, four months, I mean, I can't really imagine at all. Mm -hmm. uh, but somehow, um, we could manage to, mm -hmm. to sustain mm -hmm and survived that, that phase, uh, probably because we had some few saving, number one. Mm -hmm. Number two, of course, not much of expenditure as well. And number three, more thing has been added because of the, the one that we had in PHQ. Mm -hmm. Because uh, that small cafe in PHQ started to open after a month. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So even the other places are all closed, that the coffee shop has been opened for particularly for the police people, you know, so that, since that helped you that uh, I didn't get much of money, but th that helped me to, to sustain. To sustain. So, yeah. of course, because you're also a family man, a dad, a husband, right? So you needed that. True, true, you needed true. That. Um, talking about that, uh, you're not just a businessman, but you're also a father. So how do you manage time in between business and home and your children? Quite challenging. Uh, I think uh, we have a lot of experienced mm -hmm. people, but yeah, um, it, it's 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 a quite a very nice journey. Uh, sometimes you want to s spend time with your business setup, uh, but sometimes your family demand your time. Uh, it's it's quite interesting. I mean, I'm kind of loving it. You know, mm. uh, sometimes even if your kids and your family really wants you to stay there, we have to get out of it because. Mm you have to come and start your business of course um but so far i mean it's been almost uh seven a little more than six six years now mm -hmm. and yeah pretty much everything has been happening good uh, mm -hmm. because of god so yeah so far so good mm -hmm. i hope that the cafe will you know run even much better than you expect and hopefully you can give sustenance to your family as well, much right, more right. better. Mm -hmm. um, I want to ask you some few out of the context questions, but one last question in regards to your tea cafe journey. Mm -hmm. How would you describe your eight, almost eight years journey of opening the tea cafe to right now? Mm -hmm. um, see, I will start with the revenue generation mm -hmm. uh, because at the end of the day, any uh, young entrepreneur or a businessman would Think that okay my first thing is like to make money right mm -hmm. so um 2016 and today is a huge huge difference mm -hmm. um then um when we cross like a certain amount that's a very good day sell but today that good day sell in 2016 is like the worst day today mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. so i could see like the 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 level or the graph where we have grown from 2016 between two, it's a huge difference when it comes to revenue generation mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. Number two, the relationship that I had with the customer. Mm -hmm. uh, I think initially when we started, it's more of like a trial thing for a lot mm -hmm. of people. Mm -hmm. Then we started to have like a regular customer. Mm -hmm. And from the regular customer, now we have a lot of good relationship with them. Mm -hmm. And so now we become more as a family, you know, not just a customer and the owner, but we have a very good family members. So I, I always say is that you are my family members, you know. Mm -hmm. So even in that relation point of view, I think we have a very a huge number of people who are very regular to our coffee shop and they are a part of our family. So I'm quite happy with that. And also the other uh, point of um, our ideas of like setting up a cafe culture and coffee culture like I mentioned before, mm -hmm. I think has already reached that point. Mm -hmm. um, and I can testify that with with the kind of people or with the group of people that visit our coffee shop. I mean, they're very comfortable. Um, they're already into the coffee culture. So um, 
2016 then 2024 huge huge difference mm-hmm. in all the fields yeah mm-hmm. i think maybe it's also because of the digitization and then i mean the covid after effects could be right right um definitely i think today a lot of social media could help you grow to your mm-hmm. business so um whoever comes i mean they take pictures they share with their friends they post in their page in their mm-hmm. story and uh, not forgetting um we had like a number of people who have worked with me mm-hmm. so i want to give this this mm-hmm. thanks and gratitude to all the people who who, are, who have come to the cafe who have trained along with us who have worked helped me mm. and uh, today we had like almost 12 people working with me right now so i mean even people who have worked and left our business setup and who are with me today mm. uh, much gratitude and my appreciation my thanks goes to them as well i'm sure you're very grateful for to your customers as right, well right. to your workers as well right. so i think mm. All is well, and then all, all well. will be well in the future as well. Really <laughs> incredible true. journey. Thank you for sharing that. Um, okay, I have some two three questions, if I may, on some um, context out of the context questions. I want to ask you, uh, how much do you think is the coffee business helping to boost the economy of the state? If you have any idea or would like to share. Um, see, like I I, I mm-hmm. said earlier, I mean, if I start to come with the percentage or things like that. I may not do justice mm-hmm. because I haven't done the survey, mm-hmm. but definitely I would say that it's been adding and it will continue to add. Mm-hmm. Uh, number one is the farmer now. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think the land resource department has done a lot of good job, you know, supplying the sampling mm-hmm. to mm-hmm. to number of farmers in and around. Mm-hmm. I mean, talking about that in all the districts now. So there, let's see, at least twenty to thirty villages are also. engage with the coffee plantation the other thing is the transportation will help a lot of the young people or the the taxis and things like that jobs, the jobs. jobs right and the third is us you know like mm. who are into the coffee business mm-hmm. um not just that um i, I had an experience last week mm-hmm. they are from kolkata they're based in darjeeling i mean in kalingpong they're starting i mean they are already started but uh, they want to visit nagaland because they've heard a lot about nagaland not just the nagaland but particularly into the coffee business mm-hmm, mm-hmm. so they came up to coffee i mean they came up to kohima just to drink a cup of coffee from my coffee shop okay so that kind of you know people are there as well i mean that's just one incident that i'm sharing mm-hmm. but um, we are also boosting up a lot with the tourist sector mm-hmm, mm-hmm. especially with the coffee as well so um i think in the economy of our state is being adding so much mm-hmm. and um uh, i can be very honest even to the ministry level as mm-hmm. well i think our state government also get a lot of pre- appreciation from the union uh, government more also because of the mm-hmm. coffee production so Definitely. yeah i've also tasted a few of the coffees from nagaland and then we i i think it's quite strong but i feel like there's there needs to be lot of work done in terms of uh training as well to the laborers uh-huh. the, the agriculture workers right or, right you know, looking <clears throat> after the coffee plantations mm-hmm. and so on but mm-hmm. i feel like we have a potential to grow like yeah like i said earlier i think the department is doing so much mm-hmm. uh to train the farmers mm-hmm. but besides that we also have like a lot of private companies mm-hmm. uh like i also mentioning about the blue tukai mm-hmm. we did a little uh, a seminar here and there you know trying to train people of like how to do so um i think with with few things like that from here and there mm-hmm. plus along with the government and the department of mm-hmm. land resource as we continue with this same procedure i think um the farmer will be well versed of like what to do and how to do and how to go about and the other thing would also be the unit for instance mm-hmm. right now mm-hmm. um there's very less the processing i mean when it comes to processing unit uh the wash is very less we are more into dry mm-hmm. the processing so um i mean if there is any interest people who want to invest into the mm-hmm. processing unit will also add up a lot mm-hmm. good quality to mm-hmm. to the coffee business there needs to be a lot of government interventions in, in terms of that's there that's there, there. Mm-hmm. um besides I mean, you know that agriculture is the main economy source of our of our people but uh, besides coffee plantation what else do you think 
that the state needs to do to boost the economy of the state or the GDP? When it comes to agriculture? Yes. Um, see, one thing we can also, you know... Uh, um, not just agriculture, okay. but in terms of infrastructure, like what do we think we need to do more to uh -huh. boost I the think, economy? Yeah. I think production would be one, and I'm quite interested I'm quite interested in that field as well. Mm -hmm. So my na next step would be production. Mm -hmm. So when I talk about production, let's talk about any kind of products that we're getting here. Um, talk about the plum, talk about gooseberry, talk about wild apple, mm -hmm. talk about mm -hmm. pineapple, which is like one of the, the finest and the most juicy in the world. Talk about the oranges that yep. grows in, mm -hmm. in Rosoma yeah. and in and around the, yep. the places. Mm -hmm. So we have a huge number of you know products that we can upskill. Mm -hmm. So what we need to do, we need to invest more into the machineries. Mm -hmm. And with the machineries, you talk about the the syrup, you talk about the jam, you talk about uh, fruit filling, you talk about the dry food. Everything can be calm from mm -hmm. there, you know. So um, I, I really think think that you know the the people also need to get more into production mm -hmm. because for a business like us, it's just more of like not not stagnant, but the growth is like very slow. Mm. But when you go into the production, the growth is another level, you know. So to make money, it's another level. Mm -hmm. So I would encourage to, to people to get more into the production. Because when you talk about production, it's not just the people who are setting up the business, but you're also helping a lot to the farmers. You're helping a lot to the, the villagers, you know. So mm. I think there are like equal benefits from the farmers and also mm -hmm. the production. In terms of um, providing skills as well, right, and right, and boosting the economy in terms of creating jobs. I true, think that's what you're true. talking about yes, in yes. terms of protection. So I think uh, if we could do that, maybe the we could increase the GDP as well of the very much because so far we the economy of Nagaland is in terms of true agriculture only. So I think that if we can bring some manufacturing um, unit productions or units, mm. I think mm. that may help. Economy. Very much, very much. Mm. Yeah, and I think that's one thing that we need to, uh, uh, to think about it. Truly, mm. truly. Um, you know that we have a lot of Gen Z population right now who wants to venture into the private business. Uh, it's good in one way, but in your opinion, is that too good or...? Um, let me be very honest mm. right now. Um, there are some who have a desire and who have an interest to start a business. For those people, I would say, like, please, please go ahead. Mm -hmm. uh, don't let anything stop you, but please go ahead. Mm -hmm. But there are another group of people who start business. Mm -hmm. Number one is because your family, your parents have a lot of money mm -hmm. and you're lazy to study, uh, you're lazy to do that. But you know what happened is um, their parents will set up some business so that they will engage there. Mm -hmm. But that never sustained or mm -hmm. that never prolongs. Mm -hmm. Or maybe... That particular business that you know your parents have set up since you are not really into it mm -hmm. uh, that quality control is not there mm -hmm. that um, that consistency is not there so um, I would like I said I would encourage people who are really into business and who really want to start you should start uh, mm -hmm. because uh, you are the boss of your own and mm -hmm. uh, when it comes to to the side of the revenue generation, mm -hmm. um, there's no limit at all. Mm -hmm. Whereas in the government sector, unless it's a black money, you're getting a fixed salary for mm -hmm. the next mm -hmm. five, 10 years or 30 years of mm -hmm. your, your service towards the government. So um, I would say that uh, it all depends on your interest. Mm -hmm. So if your interest is towards the government sector or the service sector, please go ahead. Mm -hmm. And if you think that, you know, I can be the boss of my own, mm -hmm. I want to start something different. I want to get into this venture, then uh, I think people should also continue with that. Mm -hmm. But like I said, uh, don't please spoil the, the nature because <laughs> you have money and you yes. don't have anything to yes. do. Yes. Uh, because I think that will determine a lot of the quality mm -hmm. check as well. Mm -hmm. so. I think that if that provides jobs for other people, it's good. But if it's not, it's a fail, right? Right. Again, t let's see. I'm from a very rich family. Mm -hmm. I, I don't love coffee. I don't know mm -hmm. coffee. Mm -hmm. I started this business. Mm -hmm. And uh, let's see if I cannot uh, sustain for another two, three years, then all my friends or people who are working with me, mm -hmm. it'll be a loss for them as well, right? Mm -hmm. So uh, honestly speaking, I mean, if you don't know what you're doing, if you don't love what you're doing, please don't start any business mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. because that will also affect the whole chain factor as well. 
true. Because let's say you are a supplier as well, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and you so much uh, depend on to whom you supply, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm. And if that particular you know uh, business setup shut down in within no time, it will definitely affect sure. you as well. So I mean, it's, it's the whole chain, you mm -hmm, know. Mm -hmm. So it is, it is, it is. Mm. I totally agree with you because we now have the Gen Z population who just follows the flock of their friends or right. the the social media and right. so forth. So because if all the population in Nagaland is venturing into the private sector and who will run the system, the government mm -hmm, sector. Mm -hmm, so that's mm -hmm. not a true Yeah, I mean I, I want to say this very clear. Mm -hmm. Uh with the new generation now, they say don't follow the government's services. Mm -hmm. I will say please don't say that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh like I said earlier, uh let the young people uh decide and determine okay what is my interest mm -hmm. if i want to work into the government sector please mm -hmm. push them encourage them mm -hmm. find means for them to you know mm -hmm. get into that service or to that sector mm -hmm. but if the other group of people if the interest is not into the government service but you know starting up uh, their own uh, businesses if they want to be an entrepreneur please encourage them mm -hmm. but uh, let's not mix them saying that okay no this is not a time for you to think about the government sector. then who will run the government right True. so um yeah, I really want to encourage our friends and our people to mm -hmm. decide on your interest. Mm -hmm. You've been running the business for a long time now, almost a decade. So you know that it's not all sunshines and rainbow running a business. So what advice would you like to give to a very passionate person who wants mm -hmm. to do a business? And mm -hmm. What would you say? Uh, so initially when I was about to start, a lot of my friends and people mm -hmm. like you said, uh, they also give me some few advices. Mm -hmm saying that Dili, don't expect your business to run in a year. Mm -hmm. um, expect at least like two, three years for you to go on like that. Mm -hmm. But by God's grace, ever since we started, I know there was never a day when it goes down. Mm -hmm. You always keep shooting up. So I'm quite thankful to, to God for mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. um, so this will be my encouragement to, to people who are uh, into business, mm -hmm. who are thinking to start a business. Um, please do not leave mm. your space mm. because that's where the revenue is coming. Mm. And when I say that, I would encourage them to, to think about their quality because uh, I think quality is like one of the most important. So when I talk about the quality, that's, that can be your drink or the food or the service that you provide to your customers mm -hmm, mm -hmm. or in, in all aspects, you know, so that consistency needs to be there. In any kind of business, let's say you talk, you start a hardware dukan. Mm. But when I talk about the quality, you provide good quality, and also when I talk about the consistency, you have that material. That material, make sure that all those materials are available at all times, mm. so that you know, like one two customers that are looking for that materials will keep coming to you. Mm -hmm. And in that way, it's like you know, slowly we we continue to to build up and increase, add more uh, into your customers. So. Mm -hmm. uh, Never leave your place. Um, try to maintain the quality and the consistency. And I think definitely with that, with that few things and the character, I think definitely you will grow because you are passionate about what you are planning to do. So mm -hmm. I think, yeah, you were also talking about the three C's last time. All right, I yes. forgot that. I think yes. one was customer service. Yeah. One was yeah. consistency. And that yeah. one I forgot. <laughs> uh, the cleanliness. The cleanliness. Yes, I, think, yes. I think those are also... You were mentioning uh -huh. very needed. I mean, of course, we, we still try to follow that. Uh, maybe there are a lot of times that we fail to mm -hmm. do it, but we try to keep reminding ourselves because I think at the end of the day, the, the consistency with your mm. food and the services is important. True. And your uh, service towards the, to the customer, mm. the cleanliness. I think if, if we can continue to maintain these few things, um, will business work. will just grow. Yeah. I think that's a good advice. From somebody who has been in the business for a very long time, almost a decade now. <laughs> thank you, oh, thank you. One last question, All right. and then we'll end this. <laughs> um, why do you think the business and the cafe is so popular? Why? Yeah, why? Um, no answer. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Um, I mean, by God's grace, I mean, the, that, that's where we get a lot of feedback from mm. our customers, and especially people are traveling who are traveling. Uh, you go to Google, I mean, the highest rating, uh, TripAdvisor. Uh, besides that, um, of course, we have our own fault as well. But 
a lot of our young people who keeps coming here, they keep mentioning that you know these are hot spot, these are favorite place. Um, one thing is um, we are minimal with our our setup. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, we can add a lot of things, but when you do that, you know, that homeliness is not there. And a uh, couple of times, you know, when, not a couple of times, but a number of times, when people step in here, uh, they'll be shouting, they'll be making noise. I, I never say, please do not do that, you know, because I feel that it's their home. Mm -hmm. And I give that privilege and opportunity. Just continue to do what you want to do. I think so maybe the, yeah, those are a few things that they really like it. Plus, like I said earlier, um, they, they're quite friendly with my mm. staff as well. So uh, even when I'm not around, they're very comfortable, you know, ch chatting with my, my staff. So maybe that's another plus point for, for our customers to, to keep coming here. I think yeah. it's the coziness, homeliness, and the relationship. Like you always talked about previously. Right, right. I think mm. That's what makes it a very popular hotspot for everybody. Thank you, thank you. Um, thank you so much, Varad Dili. I've had an incredible time talking to you. I, I think your journey uh, is something that everybody needs to hear. And so thank you so much for taking the time to be here and to let the viewers as well to know how you've been, what you went through, and then how you succeeded. So right, thank you so right. much for that. Thank I'm you. I'm really grateful. Thank you, Brother Yenton. Yeah. And also, one last thing. Thank you for closing the show with your story. I would wish you all the best for your future endeavor. And yeah, one last thing to our viewers and to your viewers. Mm -hmm. um, make sure that you believe in yourself in mm -hmm. everything that you do. Mm -hmm. And I think with that hard work, work, work and your commitment, um, anything that you are thinking about, definitely you will succeed. So yeah, all the best Thank in your you. future as well. Thank you for gracing us with that, the, the closing. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks Thank so you everybody much. for watching and we'll, we'll be out soon. So uh, stay tuned. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> all right. Thank you, brother.